Hey colorists, my name is Mike and this is part 14 of this video series on styles of comic book coloring where we have this giant image of the Avengers, links below, and we're coloring each character in a different style and with different tools and discussing how we do that. Um, today we're going to do Storm with gradient mapping. Now unfortunately the first time I did this video uh, something happened during the compression so she's already colored and I already used gradient mapping to create these weird plasticky effects and make her hair strange looking. So instead of redoing her completely, I'm just going to talk about exactly what gradient mapping is, uh, the different uses for it, and how you you might use it in in your coloring. Now it would be unusual to color all of all of a character with it. And well, first let's define it. What is gradient mapping? Gradient mapping it, it's a tool. It's a little slider select tool that we'll get into that allows you to assign any color you want to any value you want. You can use it to to block out big chunks of a value in one color or create very strange or I mean you can you can create very normal, but you can also create kind of strange hue shifts like I have here in her clothes and depending on the different textures that you're using if we if we look in her on her suit you, you know this this sort of airbrushed thing if you have if you block out the value as one color here you don't get a gradient anymore and this airbrushing takes on this um, almost organic tone there it's it's a super it's a super neat tool uh, but I will say that it, I'm limiting my perspective of gradient mapping in this video to coloring a comic book character. Most, more often than not, it's used to, it's a, it's, it's amazing on interior art to, if, to separate big chunks of value, like if you have characters in the background or in the foreground, to separate them from wherever the focal point is, to make large, uh, tone corrections to either an entire image or big sections of image or the sky or something like that. It's a very powerful tool and certainly more powerful than I'm going to get into in this video. I'm just going to kind of show you how it works and how you can color sections of a character. So let's, let's select an area. We're going to do her breastplate here. I'm going to go to edit, tonal correction, gradient map. Now, the gradient map slider tool here works the same in Manga Studio, which is what I'm working in, as, or Clip Studio Paint, as Photoshop. They're identical. The color selection is slightly slightly different. But, I, but you need to understand that since you're setting the value here, when you go to the, any anytime you select a point and you go to the color selection tool, here you're assigning a new value, basically, to, to, this, to this slider. And this, there's no value here. This is just a saturation chart with the very top being as saturated as you can possibly get and then moving into, into gray and, and the very desaturated colors. Okay, that's very important to note. And the way that this thing works is here you have just, a, it, it, it turns this, we're, we're working on the, the grayscale area here. And anytime you select an area with a gradient map, it's going to turn it grayscale. That means that you need to render your image first. Now you can render it in grayscale ahead of time if that's easiest for you. You can do it in color. You can do it all in pink. You can do it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. The colors will not matter because you're assigning that you're doing the actual coloring here. Now these sliders move. And if you move this up, you're going to notice this gets darker. And it's not, you need to have a slightly greater understanding than that. Than that. It's not, if I move the darker colors up, it gets darker. You need to know exactly what's happening. So, from this point, which is what, approximately where this dot is, right? All of these pixels with any of these values have now become black. And you don't see a lot of black pixels, pixels in here. So if that's, if that's the case, then why is it darker? Well, also, from this point to this point, this is still this entire scale but now it's been compressed. So imagine this point is now up here. So even the pixels in here are going to get darker and there's going to be less room up here. So some of these pixels are going to become darker. The entire image 
if you watch, everywhere. And the more you push it up, the darker it gets. The, the next thing you can do is you can add m as many points as you like along the way. And with each one of these points that you add, you can add different colors. So as you add, so here you can either change, you can make saturation shifts or you can change hue. And if you just want to, say if you just wanted it to all be one color, you can select just one Let's just say one, we'll go very purple. And notice that even though I'm going in the same approximate saturation level, what we're not seeing is this value, as soon as we click, is corresponding to the exact value that it should be. So unless we change that, and if we change that, it will, it will have a big effect on the image. Now we can move these as much as we like. If we want to lighten this up some, we can make it darker. We can do whatever we want. You can even flip them if you really want a strange effect. And then the dark areas become light, and the light areas become dark. So that's if we, if you just wanted to you give it one color. You can give it multiple colors. I'll use one of these these presets here and see what happens. That teal almost works. So I'm going to turn this down to black. I'm going to push this black up quite a bit. I think I've created a few points on accident, which isn't a great idea. Okay, so we have this blue-green color. We're over here. Let's shift this entire thing towards purple as we go. So we're here. Here, we're here. And remember that even it, once you get an interesting looking rendering, because you're going to, you're going to remove some gradients, you might add new gradients in, you might, uh, who knows what you're going to do. Uh, let's just say you liked, not that I like this, but if you, let's just say that you did like this, but you didn't, that you didn't think that the colors tied together very well. Rather than fiddling more with the, the sliders, because it can be, you, you make such huge sweeping changes. You can always add, and I've just added a layer on top. And I've clipped it down. You could add, let's just say we wanted to bring this way more over here. We'll add a light, a light pink layer over the top. And then we'll just bring down its opacity. And then that way you could, you can give it a, you can add that, you can add that purplish, reddish tone to everything. And just make a correction. You can also do this with a, the the sliders and whatnot, but I I think that it you can just keep uh, keep filling the area with different colors. And to me, when using gradient maps, having these weird things, I like to do it with just a, a solid color adjustment layer rather than a, a adjusting. And then that way you can go back and change it if you need to as you render the other areas. And that, that becomes, a, it, it becomes harder to get back to your starting point if you were going to say use control U and 
Uh, of course, you could use that as an adjustment layer. Like if you go to layer and uh, I know that in Mega Studio there has to be a way to create a layer as an adjustment, which is some oh new correction layer. I'm sure that's it. Yeah. So you can do the the gradient map as a separate layer if you want. I was doing it just as an effect right over the top, which is normally how I do it because I have I keep doubles of everything if I need to go back or whatever. But you can do it however you want. So what do we start with? That. There we go. Yeah, so that is the the gradient map tool in a nutshell and kind of how it functions. Uh, the, the the advantages to it are, let's just say you do the way that I illustrated it, and I had good examples, but it's hard to it's hard to show them after the fact. But here in in her hair, I like for this I had I had these very light parts, super saturated, and they blended in. You couldn't actually tell. It looked like it was just a big solid pink mass. And so I showed that with gradient mapping, you can separate those out. And with, in her suit, I don't know if I talked about, I don't think I did talk about this. In her suit, I had the white to be very white, and I showed that you could bring, you could add a little color to the white. This is where you see these lines. This is the smudge tool where I've just blended, and it gives it kind of a, a plastic look to it that I wanted. Uh, you could see how the airbrushing looks, and... It just it has a it has kind of a bizarre you know a bizarro look to it, which is what I wanted. And I also wanted to show that in the leg down here, I rendered her I rendered these two legs identical. You can almost see, but I smooshed a bunch of these values together so that it didn't look as separated out like this. Um, there's a lot that you can do with the, with the tool just in terms of coloring, and it's not something that's used to color just single characters very much. It's it's a it's also a great tool for backgrounds and. The next time I'm using it in on interior pages, I will make a video showing the, the power of it there. But experiment with it. And this may be something you can use not just for corrections, but there I've seen people I've seen illustrators in particular. I've never I don't know that I've seen like a comic book colorist color the interior of a comic exclusively with the gradient map tool, but uh, I've certainly seen illustrators use it extensively to to color images and to create especially if you're going for a very dramatic effect. It's the best way to create huge shifts in hue and saturation uh, very quickly that, that, you know, it's because you can just create, keep creating sliders. It's so much easier than trying to render that by hand. Even if you're using separate layers or using layer masks that you can edit independently, the, the problem with that is, is, well, what if you want another layer across that here you just have to make a couple gradients and then you can create sub gradients without having to do any more rendering so and you can just create amazingly bizarre and intense effects that way or you know very subtle compressing effects it's super powerful so hopefully i've illustrated some of that and i'm sorry that the that the, video, the original video was lost but i like how she turned out she's kind of cool looking and intense and they're going away, man. We have a, we have a couple a couple of these left. We're gonna do something minimal with Iceman and show how to select colors and push colors or push line art colors into the background appropriately so that they look um, into the the right way into the distance. Then we've got Ultron and Captain America to come up with new styles for, and then we're gonna bring it all together for Thor and bring it on home. So uh, thank you for watching. And I'll be back soon with uh, with Iceman. Have a good day.